With the addition of freelance trials, in which players now have the ability to queue into trials against other solo players, I've been messing around with some really fun and deadly solo player builds. You can't always depend on your teammates when it comes to freelance playlists, especially freelance trials. Which brings us to today's video. Today's video is going to show you how to become a one-man wrecking crew. The exotic, the weapon of choice, overall the build is going to be deadly. If you're looking for a fun build for trials, freelance, this is going to be the video for you. But with that being said, if you enjoy these style of videos, you can let me know which character I should make the next build with. But without further delay, let's get into the video. Getting into this build, let's start with the subclass. We're going to be using the Stasis Warlock, the Shade Binder. Now let me quickly show you and explain which aspects you should be using for this build. For starters, I use the aspect Ice Flare Bolts, in which shattering a frozen target spawns seekers that track and freeze other nearby targets. This one is extremely lethal when it comes to trials. With players camping and playing close to one another, this really opens up a lot of opportunities to double freeze your enemies along with causing disruption to your enemy's overall positioning and gameplay. Next, we have the Aspect Bleak Watch, in which you hold your grenade to convert it into a stasis turret that fires slowing projectiles at nearby enemies. Let me ask you, how often do your enemies camp in one room? Or they do that the entire match? It's annoying. Well, with Bleak Watch, you can really disrupt any team by drawing their attention. Ultimately, the Bleak Watch Stasis Turret is a great distraction. Or it can even be used to stop your enemy from picking up a fallen teammate, which is awesome. But most importantly, Bleak Watch can be used to open up windows of opportunity for you and your team. If a teammate decides to flank, throw Bleak Watch in there, drop a Stasis Turret, and while your teammate flanks, you move in with your other teammate and you capitalize on the situation. Now, you can use any fragments, but I will be recommending two that really assist in making this build work. I highly recommend you use Whisper of Fractures. This one will provide you with melee energy when you're near two or more targets. With this being Trials and a lot of players camping, if you stand nearby several enemies, you will have a faster cooldown on your melee. Next, I am going to be recommending Whisper of Refraction. Defeating slowed or frozen targets grants you class ability energy. This fragment is extremely helpful since you will be freezing your enemies a lot. And let me emphasize on that guys, you will be freezing your enemies a lot. Next, let's talk about the grenade. I decided to use the cold snap grenade. Similar to our bleak watch, being able to use cold snap grenades on this map is extremely lethal. Since players tend to play angles, corners, and hug doorways, a cold snap grenade can punish any team who decide to use those tactics. But not only that, if your enemies decide to use a healing rift or an empowering rift, a cold snap grenade can punish them for doing that tactic as well. What I really like about the cold snap is that your enemies will be guessing, is he going to use a cold snap grenade on us or is he going to use the stasis turret? Whatever it is, each one of those will open up windows of opportunity, allowing you and your teammates to capitalize on the situation. Now, let's get into our exotics of choice for today's build. For our exotic armor, we're going to be utilizing the exotic gauntlets, the Claws of Ahamkara, which allow you to have two melee charges. Now, why is this important? Well, for starters, the Stasis Warlock melee is called Penumbra Blast, where you raise your Stasis Staff against your foe, send a blast of Stasis forward to freeze your targets. This melee alone is by far one of the most annoying to go up against, since you can punish any ape shotgunner. But you can also use it to clutch 1v3s in those close call scenarios. Since this is considered a stasis freeze, when you destroy your target, this will then activate Ice Flare Bolts and a Seeker will spawn and freeze any nearby enemies in the vicinity. Now, getting back into our exotic, the Claws of Ahamkara, this will allow us to have two Penumbra Blasts ready to go, allowing us to become a freezing machine. Now, before we get into some tips and tricks for utilizing this build in Freelance Trials, Let's get into the weapon of choice. Keep in mind that this weapon is only suggested, and I will be suggesting another one that goes well with this build, but you can use any weapon you feel comfortable with. The reason I'm suggesting these weapons is that they synergize well with the entire build. For the exotic weapon, we have the kinetic auto rifle, the Monte Carlo. This is a 600 RPM auto rifle with the perk Monte Carlo method. Dealing damage with this weapon will reduce your melee cooldown and grants a chance to a fully charged melee ability with each kill. It also has the perk Markov Chain, 
This weapon gains increased damage for melee kills and kills with this weapon. Now, I'd be lying if I told you that the Monte Carlo was an S tier weapon, but in the right hands, it is deadly. I mainly use this weapon to secure team shot kills and it also allowed me to have my melee return much faster since the perk Monte Carlo method helps with the cooldown of my melee. Now, hey, maybe you're not a fan of the Monte Carlo. Well, you can always use the exotic kinetic sidearm, the Traveler's Chosen, which comes with the perk Gathering Light. Final blows with this weapon grant stacks of Gathering Light. Consume stacks of Gathering Light, granting grenade, melee, and class ability energy. Both of these weapons are extremely deadly when it comes to controller players. If you're a controller player looking for a top tier weapon, these weapons are here. Now, if you're an MNK player, I would stick with the Monte Carlo. That's what I had a lot of success with. But, 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 if you are not a fan of those weapons, you can still use weapons such as the Vigilance Wing and the Vex. The reason I'm suggesting any other weapon is because if you focus your armor stats properly, it'll improve your grenade and melee cooldown. Now, I tried focusing my stats on two different locations. Number one is going to be my strength, so for my melee to come back much quicker. The second spot was going to be Discipline, having my grenade cooldown much quicker as well. But even trying to boost those stats up, I did not neglect recovery. I tried to get that as high as possible. So the three areas you want to focus on, Discipline, Strength, and Recovery. Lastly, I was able to get my grenade back much faster because I used the mod Bomber. Every time I activate my class ability, the Bomber perk would activate, giving me a faster cooldown, a bigger chunk to my grenade energy. Now let's finish off this video with some tips and tricks for utilizing this build in Trials. For starters, you need to understand that your Penumbra Blast has a short range distance tracking. So if you plan on using it, try getting as close as possible to your enemy without putting yourself at risk. But with that, always follow up your Penumbra Blast with weapon damage. The reason for this is if you miss your melee, you aren't a sitting duck and you can still win the gunfight. Nope. Now two things to keep in mind when utilizing nope. your stasis turret. If you plan on using it as a distraction, number one, make sure your teammates are set up for a flank. This can be easily done by just looking around the map and seeing if your enemies are already engaging. If you see one of your teammates engaging from a different angle, this is a great opportunity to activate the stasis turret. Now, if you plan on using your stasis turret, when you throw it into a room, if you don't throw it far enough, your enemies will just shoot it down. This is why you wanna throw your stasis turret behind them, making them have to turn around which makes them lose line of sight of where they're aiming at, allowing you to capitalize on that opportunity. Lastly, when it comes to defeating frozen targets, I found it much harder to eliminate my enemies using my primary weapon. So if you do freeze an enemy, try team shotting that enemy or eliminate them utilizing a special weapon. Overall, this is an extremely deadly build. And if you're someone looking to go flawless this weekend, I highly recommend you give it a try. But if you're someone looking to spice it up in trials, this is a build that can make trials super fun and make trials just a little bit more enjoyable for you. But with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, feel free to leave a like on the video, which lets me know to make more content like this. Also, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe for more Destiny 2 videos and don't forget to turn on all notifications. I really do appreciate you guys stopping by and hanging out. I hope you all have a good day and I will see you in the next video.